Welcome to my 2023 fall TBR video. Um, I made one last year as well if you want to watch it. It's a different setup than last year. It's still very hot, like 31 degrees, but we will have to make do. I lit a candle, so this is what will be accompanying us throughout this video. I can't put it behind me, so... I mean, I'm not gonna hold it either, but just letting you know, the vibes are set. <laughs> On my fall TBR list, I don't, I don't think my fall TBR list is completely set because I just watched the Book Leo's Autumn Book Rex and there were so many good ones on there but this is what I have for now and actually most of the books I will be reading this year will be digital I want to get a few more but I just haven't gotten them yet because some are going to be new releases and it's really hard to get books where I live because English is not the language here but I do only have two physical books right now. So let's get started. <gasps> Wait, I have another one actually. Oh my gosh, I almost fell while trying to get it. I have another one and it's the first one which is The Sun and the Star. I just made a The Sun and the Star reading vlog if you want to go watch it because I do talk about that more in depth. Yeah, I actually read this already. It was the first book on my list to venture into fall and it was the perfect book because it's set in fall and it follows Nico D'Angelo and Will Solis from the Percy Jackson universe and they have to go to Tartarus to save Bob, who is a titan that Percy Jackson pulled into the river Lethe to wipe all his memories and convinced the titan that his name is Bob and that he is a good person. <laughs> so yeah, Bob is still down there. And this just follows their journey down into the underworld and Tartarus and the way it challenges their relationship which is so cute like the grumpy and sunshine vibe I loved and I love the representation in this book and just in the Percy Jackson universe this is the third time this year where I read a book that dealt with going down into hell so that is very fall a perfect way to kind of start fall with a cute middle grade book and the second book on my tbr is the very secret society of irregular witches which i actually just started reading a few days ago i'm really bad at describing books so just bear with me here but this is a fantasy novel set in the English countryside and we follow this witch named Mika Moon who grew up as an orphan without really any family. She was adopted by another witch because for some reason in this world the witches all end up at, as orphans very early on in their lives and they've learned to not really be close with any other witches because too many witches together always attracts unwanted attention as history has witnessed. Yeah, so all the witches basically grow up in isolation and lead very lonely lives. But Mika decides to start posting witchy videos on YouTube because that's like a very popular thing and she is obviously not doing anything to give away that she's a real witch. But then someone in the English countryside called the Nowhere House kind of 
realizes that she's a real witch and they have three little witches in their house growing up without any sort of parental-ish figure to give them guidance on how to be witches, how to control their power. So they reached out to Mika and were like, we need a live-in tutor for our witches, please. So she goes and finds this beautiful house in the English countryside near the sea and there's sort of an odd mixture of people there. There's this old couple, um, this man named Ian and his husband Ken, as well as Lucy and Jamie who is a librarian and he's kind of the love interest in the book and I just love the way he did he is described like I feel like I'm going to love this so much it's just a very cute cozy little novel about found family that's really the trope that got me so excited for this book because from when some other booktubers were talking about how much they enjoyed this book and I really love the found family trope so yeah it's another cute and cozy early fall read. <laughs> also, I am sweating right now because that's just how hot it is. Okay, the third book is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. I've talked about this book on my channel so many times now. I read this earlier this year, back in March and April and I've wanted to reread it since. So this is another perfect fall book. This is a sequel to Ninth House. Yeah, so I'm not really going to tell you what happened in this book in case you haven't read Ninth House and want to, but basically it's magical realism. There's occultish elements. There's a bit of romance. Um, it's dark academia, and there's like also hell stuff going into hell. If you like all of the above, you should read Ninth House and Hellbent. <laughs> I guess if you don't like dark academia, or just a lot of fast-paced adventure stuff, you won't like this book unfortunately. <laughs> Next up is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This book has been on my TBR for so long because it's a classic and basically all classics I want to read at some point. This was first published in 1938 and it's mystery, gothic fiction, romance, thriller, Seems like the book that I would love. I actually watched the movie, the original 1930s movie already, not the Lily James one, um, because I just love that old Hollywood classic vibe. And so I know what happens already, but I'm really... I haven't read any of this author's books before, so I'm intrigued to see how the writing is. Basically, it's about this man who was once married to this woman named Rebecca in this mansion also on the countryside I think and apparently Rebecca died a year ago and it's been haunting this man ever since but he meets this woman who's in a lower social class and they get married and that woman is just trying to get used to the life of being the lady of this house with all these maids and servants and butlers. <laughs> Everyone seems to hate her because they're like, Rebecca was better than you and Rebecca was just all class. But then she starts to sense that something is not right here. And you kind of find out what really happened to Rebecca. <laughs> and then I'll be reading A Diary of Blood 
by S.T. Gibson. This book came out two years ago and it's been on my TBR for a while as well. But I never got it before and now I wish I had because this book was actually originally self-published and the cover is so gorgeous. But it got traditionally published this year so I think that's why I've been seeing it everywhere on Instagram again and now it has this cover which like why why did they do that why did they make it why did they level down you know that's so unfair because now the original version is out of print I think this is another one of the books that I will really love because it's also gothic it tells the story of Dracula, but from the POV of one of his brides, Constanta, and it basically follows them throughout centuries and their relationship, which is kind of toxic, and yeah, that's really all I know about it, but I think it will be really good. I think it may be a little bit triggering as well, which is why I never bought it before. But like I said, I really wish I had that old version. And then I'll be reading Bluebeard's Castle, which is actually a book by Anna Biller, who directed The Love Witch. Oh my gosh, I never expected this. This book is coming out on October 10th, so I doubt I'll be able to get a physical version of this. But this is a subversive take on the famous French fairy tale of the same name that was written by a man, I think. I don't really know what it's about, but there's a secluded gothic castle. Part of it is in Paris, and there's also charm and violence, and this young writer meeting this handsome and charming baron. Hmm. And then all these, like, all these dark things. But what really intrigues me is that it is filled with dark humor and evocative imagery and how it's a subversive take on modern romance and gothic erotica. Need I say more? That sounds right up my alley. It's also gothic. I mean, just look at this cover. Ugh, beautiful. And then I will be reading Bitterthorn by Kat Dunn. Just another witchy, fantasy, romance, gothic fiction book. Like, pretty much every book here is, is gothic. It tells the story of this witch who lives in the forest. Every year, she comes into the town to claim a companion. And then that companion is never seen again. But this year, she claims a woman, so it is LGBT. That's basically all I know. Like, she's claimed to be this witch's companion, and they go into her secluded little place, and they fall in love, I guess. <laughs> and then I want to read House of Hunger, which is another vampire book. I actually don't care much for vampires, but Somehow, I always end up reading a vampire book, I guess because it's very gothic, <laughs> so then it just keeps overlapping. Okay, so Countess Le Lisavette, who is this wealthy woman, presides over this hedonistic court, and she wants a blood maid. So the main character, Marion, goes and applies for this position. And, um, yeah, and there's a bit of mystery, and it's very sensual from what I can tell, which is something else I love in a book. 
Then I'll be reading Rouge by Mona Awad. I already talked about this in my mid-year reading check. But Rouge is going to be another new release and it deals with beauty standards and also a spa, which makes me so excited because it's giving the same vibes as her book Bunny, which I loved. There's this lavish culty spa called La Maison de Meduse and there's dark humor, seductive horror, brimming with California sunshine and blood red rose petals. Another gothic novel and some fairy tale vibes kind of. It's giving me and also mother daughter aspect of it. I just know that I will love it. <laughs> I'll be reading Neferura, which is an arc I received from NetGalley, and it is a retelling of Princess Neferura from Egyptian mythology. I do love a retelling, so I think I will enjoy this one as well. This is not coming out until February 2024. Neferura was actually the princess and high priestess of Kemet and basically it is a retelling of her story of being an Egyptian priestess. So very very cool. And the last book on my list, which is not definitive, I could always be adding more cozy novels. <laughs> Um, but for now, the last one is The Phantom of the Opera, which I actually bought last year and I was going to read it in the winter, but I did not because I wanted to save it because this seems like another gothic romance tale that I would love. This is a classic, so you may have heard of it before, but it's set in Paris beneath this opera house and the main character is called Christine. She joins the opera and then discovers that there's this phantom that lives there. It's a suspenseful tale of unrequited love, passion, and tragedy. Hmm. And his yearning for Christine. So. That is all for my fall TBR. I hope you found one or two books that you would like to add to your fall TBR or regular TBR. I would love to hear in the comments what books you are going to be reading this fall or just perfect fall recs. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.